morning on this Tuesday and welcome to Friendship United Methodist Church's Bible study. This is our last Bible study dealing with friends under construction. And so I'm glad that you're watching in whatever means you're using. Uh, I'm just glad that you're here supporting us here in this. I know we do it in the morning because that's when we have our help and we can do it. So I'm glad that you're here. Wow, lots going on over the weekend. Our president was in the hospital. Now he's home from the hospital. We have a lot of people that are dealing with so many different issues. The White House staff, a lot of them have the COVID-19. It just goes to show you that we need to be careful, especially now in this pandemic. But I'm glad that you're in the comfort of wherever, watching this, this uh, Bible study, this last one. When we finish this Bible study, next week we begin another Bible study called Check Your Commitment. And then when I'm finished with that one, actually I'm going to be taking a break because then I'm going to do the Advent Bible study because Odin is just not uh, able to do it right now and we're not aware of how we're going to do it. So I'm going to do a four-week Advent study from right here on Tuesday mornings that will be recorded and be available to those who can watch it at different hours. But I'm going to get started. I am horse this morning. The horse is horse. But I'm going to start with a song, Sunshine in My Soul. There is sunshine in my soul today, Lord, glorious and bright. Then it glows in any earthly sky, for Jesus is my light. Oh, there's sunshine, blessed sunshine, the peaceful, happy moments roll. When Jesus shows his smiling face, there is sunshine in my soul. There is music in my soul today, a carol to my King. And Jesus listening can hear the songs I cannot sing. Oh, the sunshine, blessed sunshine, when the peaceful, happy moments roll. When Jesus shows his smiling face, there is sunshine in my soul. There is gladness in my soul today, and hope and love and praise for blessings. Which he gives me now for joys in future days. Oh, the sunshine, blessed sunshine, in the peaceful, happy moments roll. When Jesus shows his smiling face, there is sunshine in my soul. All right, I'm going to do one more. What a day that will be. <clears throat> there is coming a day when no harm shall come, no more clouds in the sky, no more tears to dim the eye, all is peace forevermore, on that happy golden shore, what a day, glorious day, that will be. What a day that will be when my Jesus 
those I shall see. And I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land, what a day, glorious day that will be. There'll be no sorrow there, no more burdens to bear, no more sickness, no pain, no more parting over there, and forever I will be with the one who died for me. day that will be. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see and I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand, and leads me through the promised land. What a day, glorious day, that will be. All right, when I am done, we'll sing two more songs. But our Bible study today may be a little bit longer than what we are used to doing. But it is necessary that we do it this way. So we're talking about Friends Under Construction. This is our last Bible study. And it's entitled, the last chapter of this study that I've written is entitled, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. As a matter of fact, I'll use that closing, uh, that hymn as the closing hymn. But sometimes I used to get frustrated. I don't know about you, but I used to get frustrated about this Christian love talk. You know what I'm talking about? Maybe not. You know, phrases and statements that went like, oh, how I love Jesus. Let me tell you about my friend Jesus. And how some would speak about their personal relationship with their Lord and Savior making statements about how Jesus lives within their heart. Okay, but what does that mean? What does that mean, this living in one's heart? Now, you know, there's a popular hymn and there's many hymns. And I'm going to talk about it again. I'm going to sing it at the end. But it's what a friend we have in Jesus. And I asked myself when I was younger how someone that I cannot see, that I cannot touch, that I cannot dialogue with, talk with, be my friend. Well, the hymn makes the relationship sound more like an abject dependency than about friendship. It is a hymn about prayer and reality, not friendship. Now, we know that friends share. I've talked about that. Friends do things for each other. But when I think of my friends, I think of earthbound friends. And we don't communicate by prayer. When there, uh, you know, there was another hymn that used to bug me when I was younger and thinking about my calling to ministry. You remember, and you know it, you sing it, it's in the garden. Now that hymn puzzled. It expressed experiences that were completely foreign to me at one time. The chorus especially excluded me. I wondered then whether many people had really experienced the relationship that it talks about. Or was it an exclusive experience for the hyper spirit, the emotionally supercharged? If so, Back then, I was eliminated on both counts. 
I admit. After all these years, I have become a pretty emotional person. Lord, I will cry at a Hallmark movie. But I'm not like some so-called holy role. I do not need to be that way. I don't need to roll on the carpet, scream hallelujah, and jump up and down to have a friendship with Jesus at this point in my life. And that fact now makes me more aware of how important my friendship is with Jesus. And it also leads me to sing with more enthusiasm than I ever have before. A little more hoarse, a little off key but I still sing with a joyful heart. Now, what I'm trying to say to you is that the most important friendship that we will ever have is the friendship that we will have with our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. He is a dear friend. He is a dear friend that I have and so many have been learning to appreciate more and more with each passing day. Now, my friend Jesus keeps me from thinking more highly of myself than I ought to think. Now, some consider this statement to be the best benefit of having a friendship with Jesus Christ. A good friend is somebody who we've talked about, who tells you the most important fact about the nature of things. Well, in this case, Jesus Christ is our good friend, tells us the most important fact about the nature of divinity. And that fact is that we are not the center of the universe. We are not the most important thing. We are not the creator of the world. Nor are we the one to have the final say in all the events of the world. Now there are those who think that way. But they do not have that power. Here's what Jesus does for us. He introduces us to the true God so that we do not have to go on managing the universe all by ourselves or alone. My friend Jesus has convinced me over the years that God is competent to pilot the universe without my assistance so I can relax, although for me that is hard to do, and allow God to be God. Jesus has done even more than that. He has revealed through his personality, through his ministry, what God is like. I like what I have learned about God from my friend Jesus. And I trust in God because of Jesus, my friend. Now, having Jesus as our best friend brings to us seasons of refreshment. Now, today, i got to be honest. I'm standing here and I'm on edge. I got, I don't know what's going on. I'm stressed out a little bit. Yes, I got a good medical report, but there's still so much I need to be doing, so much I need to get done, so much I committed myself to that it stresses me out. But my friendship with my Lord and my Savior is sort of like a tonic. We talked about that. The importance of friends being a tonic. My tired stretched thin self. The best friend, your best friend, can be the best tonic, the best refreshment that you can ever have. Now, my friend Jesus has given me new eyes, a new way to view the world and things that are happening within it. Believe me, He has helped me many times as I see this world, this culture changing around us. And we all know that a good friend affects your point of view. Jesus affects his friends that way. He changes our point of view. He gives us hope. Now, we cannot look at the world anymore without really seeing how God sees what's going on. You ever think about what God sees and thinks, especially with what's going on in the world, racial injustice, pandemics, 
to discussions, to wars, to conflicts. You know, the old division of everything into sacred and secular. That's how we used to divide things. Sacred and secular, that day is gone. And so is the separation of the spiritual, the good, and the material bed. It's all wrapped around each other. It's all together. You know the hymn, This is My Father's World. Well, Jesus tells us that it is his Father's world as well as everything that is in it belongs to God. And God has the final say. Now, if you can accept that, then our friendship with Jesus makes us a lot more, in some ways, worldly. But not in necessarily by the old definition of worldly, but by a new definition of worldly. In other words, we're not subscribing to earthbound values. But we're developing a deeper appreciation of all things God. All things God. And we struggle and strive as we live in this world, to see God in all things that are going on and happening around us. We see God in the natural masterpieces around us. We see God in the brilliant colors and splashes of light and shadow we no longer take for granted. I am constantly, constantly amazed at every opportunity to see a sunset, to see the orange, to see the colors. To know that God created this, that God is in control of this, cannot take these things for granted any longer. We need to thank God for it all, for in the midst of all things, God shines through. Now, we cannot look at God without seeing the world, you know, and they're connected. When we see a beautiful tree, when we see a beautiful flower, when we see a beautiful mum, you know, blooming away. When we see those things, we also see God. I mean, God so loved this world that he gave his only begotten son for all of us. Because of Jesus Christ, we cannot confine our worship the gazing fondly into the heavens. We look up to see God looking down. Really, God is looking down. God's watching the lost and least. When we first fall into a relationship, a friendship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, well, just like we do with our good friends, they take a special place in our hearts. And as our friendship with our Lord deepens, we learn to look where he looks and to love as he loves. And so that is why I guess as I have grown older, when I look at people, I see potential, possibility. I see new creations. When you have made yourself into your own God, Congratulate yourself on your superiority to the mere mortals around you. You think you're above everybody else. But when you give up that divinity, you become far less critical of other people and you realize that you're with them. You're one with them. And our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ's perfection makes you aware of your imperfections. His graciousness exposes your arrogance. Your view about others and about the world changing. Now, if you have your Bibles, I'm going to take a look here at 2 Corinthians. So let's uh, open our Bibles up if you've got them, the, seven, the 2 Corinthians. If not, just listen to me as I share the reading of the Word with you. I'm looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. And this is Paul writing to the Corinthian church. So Paul writes, So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Jesus Christ in this way, 
we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is, she is, a new creation. The old is gone, and the new has come. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. You know, we who belong and are friends with Jesus Christ, we are a new creation. Our eyes are filled with a compassion that was missing from our old nearsighted eyes. Now this is one of the toughest lessons that we Christians have to learn. A friend of Jesus Christ is to be a friend of mine, regardless of all the differences that distinguishes us. We are now, if we believe in Jesus Christ, if we are under the lordship of Jesus Christ, if we are friends with Jesus Christ, we are now all one with him, having been made a new person in him. Now, again, if you have your Bibles, I want to take a look at the book of Ephesians. I want to look at chapter 2. So let me get this. Chapter 2, Ephesians chapter 2, and we're going to read verses 14 through 18. Again, this is Paul writing to the Ephesians. For he himself, referring to Jesus Christ, is our peace, who has made the two one and has destroyed the barrier who has destroyed the dividing wall of hostility between us by abolishing in his flesh the law with its commandments and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new man out of the two, one new person, thus making peace. And in this one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. For through him, we both have access to the Father by one Spirit. My friend, Jesus has accepted me in spite of my unacceptability. He has accepted you in spite of your unacceptability. Now the Bible tells us that I can rejoice in having a friend in Jesus who has accepted me even when he has every reason not to accept me. This is a powerful truth. When I was still a sinner, when even I was aware of my sinfulness, even before I was willing to forgive myself for my sin. My friend Jesus embraced me. More than that, he forgave me. Now, once again, we're going to take a look at our Bibles, this time to the book of Romans. To the book of Romans, the fifth chapter. We're looking at Romans chapter 5. Verses 6 through 8. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. That while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Now, you all know that we've talked about that good friends are honest with one another. Despite my sin, despite our sin, Jesus died for us. Jesus wanted to be friends with us anyway. He 
did this by taking our place on the cross to keep us from being lost for all eternity. He did this in order to have a relationship, a friendship with you and with me. Now Jesus meets us where we are at, becoming like us, so that having confidence, we can serve him. So that having confidence, Jesus can help us become more like him. And that is true friendship. Now, my friend Jesus gives me something to live for. Jesus, my friend, is allowing me to help him, to be a part of his work in this world, his ministry, if you will. Jesus, my friend, our friend, has given us a reason to live and made the living fun. Oh, it's challenging. At times, it's a difficult thing to do. But many times, it is also fun. Jesus, my friend, your friend, our friend, energizes us because of our friendship with him. You see, I do not want to just exist with Jesus. I want to live with Jesus. That is how it should be. That's how it should be with all of his friends. Now, my friend Jesus also dwells in my, let's call it my consciousness, your consciousness. And that means he dwells in our conscience. Now, the benefit of having Jesus Christ as your friend is that he lives inside of you. It took me a while to figure all that out, especially when I was very young. Jesus is present in our living through the Holy Spirit. His presence develops my thinking on life on love, on happiness. Love and compassion for others are very important. And so it develops my thinking. Jesus does living in my heart for that purpose. His words become my words in many ways. His will is my will. And I am finally beginning to understand Paul's statement that he made to the Galatians. Take a look at that and share that with you. That's Galatians chapter 2. Let me go back here and get this out. Galatians chapter 2, it's just one verse. It's verse 20. 2 verse 20. All right. I have been crucified with Christ. And I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Now, when you want to think what Jesus thinks, when you want to act as Jesus would act, when you want to love as Jesus loves, when you want to desire what Jesus desires for you, then in a very real sense, you can say that Christ is living in you. The Holy Spirit makes this identification with Jesus possible. Now, in addition, the longer you are friends with Jesus, the more of him you know, the more of him you adopt. Because through your friendship with our Lord and our Savior, Jesus shares with you more of himself. This is the same thing that he promised his disciples. And we can be reminded of that fact in the Gospel of John. So once again, if you have your Bibles, we're going to go to the Gospel according to John. We're going to go to chapter 16 in that Gospel. Chapter 16, just verses 12 and 13. So Jesus is talking. Jesus says, I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears. And he will tell you what is yet to come. My friend, 
Jesus is very reliable. When others walk away, when others fail, Jesus is there. When I am uncertain of a course of action, I ask myself, what would Jesus do? It's that phrase that became popular again because it was one time very popular at the turn of the century. Not this century, but the last century. What would Jesus do? Now, Jesus is a sure guide to all of us who know him as our friend. Whenever I have asked myself, what would Jesus do? Thought about it, came to a conclusion, and then did it, I have been saved. My worst mistakes were when I did not consult my Lord and my Savior, where I consulted when I ignored the information that he was giving to me, his counsel. Of all of my friends, Jesus has given me the most reliable advice. And I recommend my most reliable friend, Jesus, to everyone. One cannot go wrong listening to the counsel of our Lord and our Savior. And of course, I have to say, I not only love my friend Jesus, but I like him as well. Sometimes we love people, but we don't necessarily like them. Well, I love my Lord and I like my Lord. I mean, Jesus is not going to let us go. There is truth in another of those sentimental hymns that I could never understand many, many years ago. And it's the old hymn, the longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. Now John, again, expresses my feelings better than I can, but this time it's back in the letters. It's 1 John. So let's go back here to 1 John chapter 3. Almost there. 1 John chapter 3, verses 16 through 20. And I'd like to share this with you from 1 John 3, 16 through 20. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possessions and sees his brother or sister in need, but has no pity on that one, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. This then is how we know that we belong to the truth, and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows, God knows, everything. It is wonderful to know that someone loves us with an unqualified love. Jesus gave himself to prove his love, and that's why I can trust him. He died for me. He had nothing to gain by dying for me, and yet he still died for me for you, for us. It was love. It was pure and simple love. You cannot help liking someone who is so determined to save you that he's willing to die. Now, as my friend, I seek Jesus' approval. Oh, I've made wrong turns and done wrong things that have cost me. But at this point in my life, I now believe in checking it all out with Jesus Christ. Of all the things in this world I want because of my friendship with my Lord and my Savior, I want him to approve of me. I care about what Jesus thinks about me. And I want Jesus to be pleased with me. I want to be his true friend for all eternity. Now, being a born-again Christian, being a friend of Jesus, means that Jesus cares about me completely. He cares about what I do. He cares about who I am becoming. He 
cares about you as well. Jesus cares enough to check up on how we are doing, who we are serving, and whether we are growing in our faith. Sometimes, we have to admit it, sometimes it is difficult to be good for God's sake. But it is worth the effort because we are better people. Better people if we honor the friendship we have with Jesus Christ. And we can make the world a better place. My faith is more than just a philosophy of life, much more than intellectual exercises or aesthetic enjoyment. It is, be, it is obedience to the very will of God through the friendship I have with Jesus Christ, whose approval I seek. It is obedience that leads me to do more, even when I'm tired, even when I'm stressed out. It enables me to do much more. We need to have friends, but we also need to have a friendship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, this brings our Bible study to an end. I'm going to share with you two more hymns. And then we're going to wrap this up with prayer. And then next week we will start another study. So let me change back over here, move my music things around. This is one reason why I asked for this table up here. And John and I lugged it in ourselves to get it here. And by the way, John is up in the booth today. He's, he's taking care as much as he can so that you can have this information, this study shared. So I'm going to move this around to see what's going on here with this. Uh, and I'm going to shut up and I'm going to share with you what a friend we have in Jesus. Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. pain we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrow share? Jesus knows our every weakness. And to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden? Comfort with a load of care. Precious Savior, still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. My friends despise forsake me. Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms you'll take 
and children will find us almost there. All right, I'm going to do Won't It Be Wonderful There? Won't It Be Wonderful There? Eternity with God Almighty. Here we go. Savior, we enter the glory land. Won't it be wonderful there? Ended the troubles and cares of the story land. Won't it be wonderful there? Won't it be wonderful there? Having no burdens to bear. Joyously singing with heart bells all ringing. Oh, won't it be wonderful there? Walking and talking with Christ is supernal one. Won't it be wonderful there? Praising and adoring the matchless eternal one. Won't it be wonderful there? Won't it be wonderful there? Having no burdens to bear, joyously singing with heart bells all ringing. Oh, won't it be wonderful there? There, where the tempest will never be sweeping us, won't it be wonderful there? Sure that forever the Lord will be keeping us, won't it be wonderful there? Won't it be wonderful there, having no burdens to bear, joyously singing with heart bells all ringing, oh, won't it be wonderful there, won't it be wonderful there, having no burdens to bear, joyously singing with heart bells all ringing. Oh, won't it be wonderful there? Just a reminder, tomorrow we do have our pick-me-up sing-along service. Thursday is our prayer meeting service. Both of those are at 10 o'clock. You can watch or you can dial in. And then we come back to Sunday worship again, Sunday at 9 and Sunday at 1045. We'll have this Sunday and next Sunday talking about the Lord's Prayer. And then we're going to move into some other sermon series and get ready for Advent. But for now, my friends, stay safe, stay healthy, be prayer warriors for one another. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Our gracious and our loving God, I don't know everybody's pain. I don't know everyone's joy. But I do know that walking with Jesus brings us joy in the midst of the pain. So, Lord, as we come to the end of this Bible study, as we have thought about the meaning of friendship with one another and friendship with Jesus Christ and friendship with God through Jesus Christ, we thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for your love. And now we ask, Almighty God, that you be with us that you take care of us, that you show us the way you would have us go. And now, Lord, we offer this prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. Go in peace, my friends. Enjoy the rest of this beautiful day that the Lord has made.